on the plate with Carl Wells. Recently, I met Charlotte de Ponsin. Charlotte is the national brand manager for the Moy Hennessy Wines and Champagnes portfolio in Canada. We spoke at a dinner hosted by Charton Hobbs, the ambassador of premium brands, and Raymond's Restaurant. It was a dinner featuring five courses and five Dom Perignon vintages. The focus of our conversation was Dom Perignon, but we also discussed the wider Moe Hennessy portfolio. Charlotte, uh, Louis Vuitton, Moe Hennessy, when I hear those words, I think of quality right away, but I also think of a lot of different products. Can you explain to me what Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy is all about? Yeah, sure. So LVMH, or Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, is a luxury group uh, that um, uh, where we have a lot of different houses. Uh, it could be clothes, it could be fragrance, it could be uh, cosmetics, but also, of course, uh, wines and spirits. It's all about luxury, quality, you're right. Um, time is really important for our houses also. It's, um, this is a perfect expression of the French savoir-faire. So within Louis Vuitton Moitinessi, you have the Louis Vuitton part that is so all the clothes and cosmetics, and Moitinessi, this is the wines, um, wines part of the, of the portfolio. Now, let's talk about Dom Perignon. I, I'm sure that if it's not the most expensive wine that you represent, uh, well, I guess Krug is pretty is up there as well. Um, what is, what is it about uh, the Dom that uh, warrants such a, a high price tag? What is it about the quality of this particular wine that makes it so special? Uh, Dom Perignon is really a unique house, uh, sh a champagne house. It's uh, the only big house of champagne that makes uh, vintages only. We have, uh, there are also houses um, like Salon that is doing uh, vintage only, but it's only Chardonnay. We are the only houses doing uh, vintages with both Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. It's a unique savoir-faire. It takes a lot of time to craft uh, Dom Perignon. Uh, if we are talking about vintage, it takes nine years of creation. Uh, Richard Geoffroy, that is a chef, who is a chef de cave, really talks um, about creation. Tom Perignon is about creation, it's about emotion, experience, uh, and this is where Tom Perignon is a completely different house than the other wines, other ones, even from our portfolio um, at uh, LVMH. So, uh, vintage is a key notion for Dom Perignon. Uh, we only saw the best grapes. Uh, we have a unique access to the 17 Grand Cru, plus the premier Cru from Ovillé, where Dom Perignon Abbey is. And um, the long maturation on the lease, so this is nine years of creation, this is what makes uh, Dom Perignon really unique. You also have a um, unique Dom Perignon style that is more on the minerality uh, than the other Champagne's houses. It's a seamless sensation when you're having Dom Perignon, and uh, we'll have it tonight. Every expression uh, follows each other. It's really seamless. So, and what makes Dom Perignon so unique is also his um, creator. So, Today, uh, Richard Geoffroy, he's a creator of Dom Perignon House, but it all started with uh, Dom Pierre Perignon in uh, 1668. Uh, actually, it started in 650 when there was a bishop, uh, Saint Niva, who uh, dreamt about, um, he was on a, on, a, on a small village on a tree. He dreamt about um, a dove, and when he woke up, he saw this dove. So he, he had a divine inspiration, and he decided to build an uh, abbey. So a little church, and this is where Dom, Peri Dom Pierre Perignon in 1668 uh, um, uh, was uh, working. So in the Abbey of Ovillé, this is where Dom Perignon is today, and he was the master. Um, he was a cellar master, uh, not a cellar master, but he was uh, managing the cellar at this time, and he had a vision. He wanted to do the best wine in the world. So. This quest of perfection at that time, Richard Geoffroy still uh, has it, and he's like he carries the same vision today. So the quest of perfection to do 
uh, the, to do the best wine in the world. And uh, some of people say that Don, uh, Don Perignon created champagne just uh, to be really um, fair to the story. He didn't invent champagne, so there was there were some uh, champagne wines before Don Pierre Perignon. But what he did, he brought three major innovations to the winemaking uh, process. He decided to source only the best crepes. He also decided to blend uh, different grapes from different villages. Before that, it was only from one village. And also, he uh, decided to uh, to do a gentle pressure on the white, uh, on the black grapes to to white wines. So those three major innovations really uh, brought the champagne to another level. So this is why we say that he is a spiritual father of champagne, actually. Now, when we drink Dom Perignon, what should we be tasting? What should that experience be like? What should we be looking for? To be honest, everyone is different, and I think everyone is looking for something different. Uh, Dom Perignon style is really, it's really the harmony between Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Uh, we don't give the blend, but this is a perfect balance between those two. Uh, it's a perfect balance between uh, freshness, freshness and maturity. When you drink it, when I, uh, what I said is that you have a, a seamless sensation. Uh, on the finish, you have also some silky notes, some mineralities that are even more present uh, in the P2. For example, the second plenitude wines of Dom Perignon. Uh, this is uh, really what you're looking for. And so this is the main style of the house, but of course, each year is different. And uh, each year, uh, so each vintage is a, it's a new creation, it's a new challenge. So you don't have any comparison possible between two vintages. You have the same style, but you will be able to tell between the 05 and 06 vintage that this is a different story of the year. So uh, how should we present Dom Perignon? I'm thinking of, you know, the type of glass, the temperature, whether we should serve it with food, and if so, what kind of food, that sort of thing. So for glasses, uh, more and more champagne houses uh, agree with us. And uh, at Dom Perignon, we want large wine glasses. Why? Because uh, when you're drinking uh, champagne out of a flute, it's like you're going to a concert with earplugs. It's, 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 not, it's not great. You don't fully enjoy the experience. So you need wide, wide large glasses uh, for the aromas to to express fully themselves. Even for, for Dom Perignon Rosé, I would suggest a wider glass also because Pinot Noir needs more space to express. Um, for the temperature, when it's too cold, it, uh, it neutralizes uh, the senses. So I would say between 10 and 12 degrees for Dom Perignon Vintage, and maybe for P2 more 12 than 10. Um, and of course, Dom Perignon is great. Um, in a, for a cocktail, for aperitif, even in clubs, because uh, it's a really popular brand in, in nightclubs. But with food, it's really amazing, and you can do a whole dinner with champagnes uh, from the vintage blanc to the vintage rosé uh, to the second plenitude wines. It's uh, a champagne wine is also a wine, so it can definitely replace a, a red wine, for example, to pair with uh, with lamb, with meat. It's it's amazing. Mm. Well, I, I have to agree with that because I have actually had champagne with many different courses, mm -hmm. many different kinds of, of food, and, and it works quite wonderfully. Um, if I were to visit the house of mm -hmm. Dom Perignon in Champagne, what kind of experience would I have there? What would I be able to see and do? Um, I won't tell you because I, want to sp I don't want to spoil you. I've been in Champagne in March, so two months ago, and uh, it was my first time at Dom Perignon, actually. You are able to go to Ovillet, so to the real abbey where Dom Pierre Perignon lived, actually. Um, you can see the old library, you can... Um, see also some uh, so the abbey of Ovide is surrounded by vineyards it's beautiful and it's really inspirational we do understand how Dom Pierre Perignon was, were, was inspired actually and how Richard Geoffroy the actual chef de cave is uh, now um, it's totally magical and uh, don't hesitate don't hesitate to go to Champagne to really understand Dom Perignon it's it's amazing 
Just before we go, I'd like to ask you to tell us about some of the other products that Moy Hennessy mm -hmm. has, apart from Dom Perignon, just to give people an idea of what a wide range of products you have. Sure. So at Moy Hennessy, we have a full range, full range of champagnes, such as, of course, Dom Perignon, Krug, as you mentioned, Renard also, um, Veuve Clicquot, and Moët and Chandon. Moët and Chandon, that is the most loved champagne in the world because uh, every second we have one bottle popping. Um, we also have wines, actually, from New Zealand, uh, from Argentina, from Spain. We also have a sparkling wine called the Chandon uh, from California. Mm. Uh, Moët and Chandon team went to California um, in the 70s to, uh, to create a wine uh, with a both French savoir faire and um, in the terroir of California. And we also have spirits, uh, brands such as the Vodka Belvedere, Hennessy Cognac, uh, and the Scotch and uh, Single Mats, uh, Clamorangi, and Arbeck. It's a full portfolio. It's a really amazing brand where quality is the first uh, priority and where time also is, a f is one of the main priorities. Thank you very much for uh, speaking, to me, speaking to me today and telling me about the Dom and, of course, uh, everything else about uh, Dom Perignon and Moy Hennessy. You're very welcome and cheers. <laughs>